No, it's funny. We're talking about hot streaks and everything's all about NC State right now because of the Final Four oh, trip. Yeah. But shh, 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 shh. Hurricane's still cooking. Yeah. Still doing their thing. Yep. Don Waddell kind of liked his group before the draft, or before the trade deadline. Now he really likes this group. And they added a guy. Before we talk about what the Canes have been doing as of late, my Twitter timeline was blowing up. People yeah. freaking out over Scott Morrow. Who yeah. is Scott Morrow? Why are people hyped about this? Uh, you should be hyped about this, this young man because he is one of the elite defensive prospects in college hockey. And a, a few years ago, he steps into the same place where Kel McCarr plays and breaks Kel McCarr's records mm -hmm. as, a, as a freshman. So uh, the team, however, for Scott wasn't that good uh, the last few seasons. Okay. Uh, but they did make it into the... Uh, their version of the NCAA tournament for hockey. They're not going to get to the Frozen Four, but uh, they get eliminated, and so now he's available to come and play. And, look, his offensive upside is great. Uh, this is a guy who I think if this was a decade ago, mm -hmm. you'd probably see him in a Canes uniform for sure next year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that this could be a guy who maybe could benefit from a year in the AHL, but – it's there as far as the mindset, the physical ability, and the offensive upside on the blue line that he can provide. So you should be excited about this guy because he's, again, one of these players who he's not that far away from being able to step in and play. I don't care if he plays or not. You know why? The symbolism, sir. Jack Johnson didn't want to come. Oh, <laughs> didn't want to play. Stop. Complete, completely different. Adam totally Fox different didn't want to come. Yeah, didn't want to play. Yeah, this could be. <laughs> and now the Canes have convinced one of these college guys. Oh, you you want to be a part of it? You want to put your name on the freaking cup? Yeah, come on down. Oh no, I mean that's let's go. Joe Gillio is not wrong with that that assessment. And the other thing too is players look at depth charts now. Mm -hmm. It's not just that they look at all right. Where's my playing time? coming from like are there nil if, deals too they got to be considering <laughs> no anyway but no college I, actually does it right no i know they do <laughs> but if i do sign you know what's in front of me mm -hmm. and uh, you know look that if we want to live in the now and we should with how good this canes team is um you look at that blue line and you're like how is anybody going to crack it they're looking but they're looking two three years down the line they're looking at this no they're looking, they're at, looking at next at this year, year when they where there's a bunch the of ufas who, but are they going to be like i don't is know somebody like I, morrow I, is was a nikishan is that is that the pairing that is going to be ready for next year though the nikishan one i i don't want to comment on because there is so many things going on besides just a simple fair contract fair, I mean, fair, he's fair, playing fair. in the khl and they have put out their edict of you know, you're going to be 25 years old. You're going to you're going to fulfill your deal to the last possible second over there. Right. And I do not want to get into any of that and say, oh, yeah, because who knows? That could turn on a dime. Sure. I, I mean, somehow I want to now hear the story how the Philadelphia Flyers got their six foot eight net minder <laughs> across where it looked like that was not going to happen. I mean, there was a big story with him last year that yeah. they yanked him out of you know Sweden. Right. Because they had to play. But yeah. on, on these on these fronts. What we've seen with the Canes organization is they're not afraid to go into unrestricted free agency with players that they have under contract. Mm -hmm. And they'll sort it out come July 1st. Okay. So, But what Scott Morrow is looking at is, okay, well, if things go this way, I am much closer to the NHL than if I go someplace else. And I think for certain players, you can only do so much in college when you are an elite player now. Like you can, you want to win a national championship. It's why all the Michigan guys went back yeah. uh, for college hockey. And there's so many loopholes that need to be tied off in, in hockey with how you can bring players over. But you should be excited about this guy because, and I think part of it too is where Joe is right. I think a few years ago, you'd have somebody going, now nah, I'm going to play this out and, and see where I can then go anywhere. And now it's like, all right, you want me? Let's get a contract done. I can't wait. This is my best Birdman meme. Mm -hmm. That's his name, right? The Birdman. Yeah, the Birdman, right? How many months ago? How many weeks ago did we talk to Rod Brindamore? And I told him, Aho's on a different plane right now. Yeah, he's got. He's showing us a different gear right now. It was the this end. Of, is, it was the end of February. This is the best version of Aho we've seen. Mm -hmm. And and Rod, with his best poker face, eh, he gave me the got man. He gave me the. I don't know about all that. Aho's been ridiculous. Come on. This is the best we've seen him play. It's, it's funny because um, I was on the way over. He was doing an interview that I was listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to 
or Stellic, Stellectricity, for those of you who grew up near <laughs> Toronto, and uh, Scotty Lachlan on NHL radio. And Sebastian said, I don't know. I still think I have more to give. That's like it's every, true. That, it's true. And that's but, every hockey player. They always think that. But he has also, I think, gotten to the point of not that the game is easy for him, but he is to a point now where he knows what he needs to do mm -hmm. to produce the way that he produces. And I think you also have to take a look at who does he play alongside. Uh, and right now, this this line of Jake Gensel with Seth Jarvis being centered by Sebastian Ajo. Yes, yes. Point to that calendar. Of the month, man. Puppy time. As well, you should. But I think that's part of it. But what Sebastian Ajo is doing now, and this is the thing where I, where you're right, I think this is the best version of him that we're seeing. He's making his line mates better. Instead of you say, oh, it's... Got to have you know, Turbo over there. Yeah, he's all, yeah, well, yeah. he, you know, if you, you got to get him going, he needs Tavo Teravine. Now it's like, you need to get somebody going. Maybe we're with Sebastian Ajo. That's, I almost sound like a broken record here when we talk about uh, the lines and whatnot. I'm glad you brought up the Turbo thing. I always felt that was more him needing to step up. Not not Ajo, not getting other people mm. going, that kind of stuff. If you put, Ajo, Ajo's best attribute is setting things up, making plays. If you put him with the proper playmakers, guys who can finish, I was always been curious, okay, what ultimately is yep. going to be set up? I never really viewed somebody like Tara Vine in this. As, I'm not saying that Tara Vine is no. not a bad player. It's just that's not what he is. Gensel is that. Well, the, the thing is, Tara Vine is the setup man. Yeah. And, you know, he's not looking to shoot. Yeah. And, and that kind of becomes, for lack of any better term here, a security blanket. Mm -hmm. Well, I know he's going to do this, and we mm -hmm. played together, so you go from there. The thing for me with Jake Ensel that is just popped off the, the ice, how good of a passer he is. Mm -hmm. My God. I mean, it's right where it needs to be. Him and, and Evgeny Kuznetsov. Evgeny Kuznetsov throws no-look passes that are flat, and they're right where they need to be. I'm like, all right, you get away with that once, twice. He'll do it two, three times in a game. He'll be looking at you. Joe, and there's no way he can see what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. Yet he just dishes, and it's right where it needs to be. Um, but I think for Sebastian Ajo, again, I, I can give you all the stories. He's the most competitive guy on the team. It doesn't matter what they're playing, uh, what they're doing when it oh, comes to oh, we, familiar. Oh, we know. Familiar. oh, we know. I know, I know next, you guys next, know. Next week, <laughs> next week, we're dropping uh, the latest in the Joe Giglio gets beat by Sebastian Ajo in something that is not hockey. Mini golf? It's a uh, it's a it's a Swedish table game. No, not Swedish. Uh, Dutch. It's Dutch. Dutch. I'm sorry. It's a Dutch shuffleboard. You were there for the Dutch shuffleboard, weren't you? I was. I, you were playing it. I was yeah. not there for the end result. Oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually provided one of the great lines from Aho. <laughs> who I don't think people understand how sneaky, funny he oh, is. Oh, un <laughs> he is. unbelievable sense of humor uh, like yeah, dry quick wit very dry quick and it's funny Joe's like well it's this it's this Dutch shuffleboard game and he's like I'm finished and it's just like just deadpan and I'm I'm just I'm like oh okay he got you on that one that was pretty good yeah but we drop we'll be dropping that video next week all right get that to, to get yeah. to the to get to the other thing that the canes have been very very good at and this is where I was I'll I'll just straight up say I was wrong about the obsession over goaltending Freddie Anderson being back and being as locked in as he is really does bring home all those discussion points from earlier in the season as it relates to goaltending. Yeah. It unlocks something, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it it does, but also at the same time for Freddie, and I can't speak for him, but you go through what he went through. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you come back and you're like, well, this is just a game. You know, this yeah. is, I, I just, I, I'm lucky to do what I do. I'm just going to go play. And we saw it two years ago when Frederick Anderson got to Carolina. You know, his first, 10, 11 starts with the Canes where we're talking Vesna trophy with him. And, you know, this is going to be a guy who's going to anchor the net for years to come. His thing has always been health related and being able to stay on the ice. I don't think that the questions with Frederick Anderson, other than, and it's only in Toronto when you go playoffs, but then you have to question everybody who has gone through Toronto the last decade for, you know, <laughs> are you a playoff producer or not? Uh, but that was the the outstanding question. And then I think Freddie answered those questions last year mm -hmm. in the playoffs. You know, he was good. And he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sergei Bobrovsky mm -hmm. in that Eastern Conference final. What got unlocked for me was Pyotr Kochetkov. When it really, okay, here's the saddle. We're going to give it to you. Yeah. He took it. And in, in the questions that I had for, do you really need, do you have to have somebody else? Um, 
and they they found Spencer Martin, who maybe the five most important starts uh, that a goaltender will have for the Carolina Hurricanes in, in one season because of they could just, okay, we can get through this. We don't have to make a deal. We don't have to go out yeah. and overpay for someone. We can we wait for Freddie. Yeah. Exactly. We yeah. can wait to see how all of it shakes out. And then Anderson comes back in, what, 7 0 I think it's 1.88 goals against, a 9.51 save percentage, two shutouts. And it's not just against the bottom of the league. You know, it was a Montreal team that was playing better that he shut out. Uh, you, you take a look at, at how he just is able to put things together. I mean, uh, for uh, it was a Detroit team that was playing for their playoff lives that he shut out. Kochekov then doubles down and gives yeah. the shutout against Montreal the next night. So, again, the goaltending here for this team is – it just always, for me, comes down to health. Not how do they play, just how healthy they are. Health can go away quickly, though, yeah. as we know. And I guess that gets to my my overall big picture question as we look back on the regular season as it's wrapping up. Did we... Have we underrated the quirkiness of the Canes' regular season and how they've been successful okay. and whether or not this is something that actually is going to help them psychologically as they get in the playoffs? So look, man, we've dealt with this. We've dealt with that. We've had players gone. We've had players have to step up. Next man up mentality. Are we underrating the kind of quirkiness of the year? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, and I mean, I hate to do this because everybody plays a schedule that at some point you're just like, what? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. is people, this? And people get hurt. And, you know, injuries no, no. are part of it. Um, you know, it's a computer generated schedule, you know, and then there are a couple of versions. Like, I don't know if everybody understands that. It's not, there's just one version of the schedule that gets spit out at, mm -hmm. you know, before the year starts. And that's what you go with. They hand them out, and then you know teams will look at it and say, well, we really don't want to play on this day. We would rather play more here, or you've got dates that are booked, or you're trying to book things for the venues that you are you play in, all of those things. So sometimes the schedules, you'll look at one, and you'd be like, wow, why did you reject that one? And you're like, oh, well, because this is going to be in your arena. Or how do you get four days off here, but you're going to play eight games in 14 days there? Mm -hmm. Um one, I do believe the computer is hell from 2001. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Can't do that. Sorry, Almost Rod, got a spit take out of I you, huh? Can't do that, Rod. You're going to be out in the West Coast oh, for two months. You you want to be healthy? I'm sorry, players. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's that. But I think that what the taxing part of the schedule did, the quirkiness, uh, you, you get to that and maybe this is the – turning what was the turning point of the season oh know. there we go um maybe it's the players only meeting after they lose to vancouver yeah in december maybe it's the win that they follow that up with in in ottawa with the poke check on brady kachuk and Pyotr kochekov you know jabbing back at kachuk as he's going by him i just think that this team the core team who when don waddell says we really like our group he was always talking about that core group i think they got through that and they're like all right Okay. Mm -hmm. There's not nothing. If we get through this, this shouldn't derail us. But you know, you have some guys who've been fighting through some things. We'll see. It'll be now. I got to go to the Zen philosopher. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens when you get to the playoffs. Because the one thing I, I don't know if you guys know this now, sports gambling is now legal in the state of North Carolina. It is. It I is. have not really noticed a lot of advertisement for no, this. I wish someone would have told me. I know I I I was caught totally I mean, off guard. We, we it was weird. I feel weren't we just talking about that before Mike came in the studio? So, you, you were introducing people to your nerfy bets. Nerfy. <laughs> I was telling him about my completely garbage NBA uh parlay, five dollar parlays to see if I can cash out on that. Uh, which I have. I want to thank I want to thank DraftKings for the new watch I just bought. But hey, anyway. Hey, but you you take <laughs> I'm being serious yeah, by know, the way. I know. You but you mean. you take <laughs> Wow, I, I swear I think I'm the only it's person. It's just who, a Casio no, G shock. To I, think, wrong, I think I'm the only person in North Carolina who does not have a, a gambling app on their phone. Okay, good for you. I, do I, I don't. I am. You go I'm, to Vegas enough. I That's do good. exactly. I do. Uh, I really do. <laughs> like, eh, I'm oh, good. Mike's I here. That's hey, good. Hey, we you, wanted to renovate. You better that not floor. be the only one. All the other people who are employed by the Carolina Hurricanes oh. better have the right rules as well, because well, that's no. the last thing anybody needs. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, trust me, because we've gone down that road. But yes. You know, you take a look, and I think we just got sidetracked from uh, the the original thought I was having it about, about you know putting things together. Yes, uh, for this team, but I I would not when it comes to the playoffs. Here's the gambling tie-in: I would not bet in the NHL playoffs one penny because 
anything can happen. Every well, every year. They better because I put all of my bonus bucks <laughs> on the Canes. But what all of my bonus bucks are on the Canes. Every year. By the way, five dollars right now can get you two hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> Use the OG twenty four. Oh wow, we're all tying it together. Yeah, I'll tie OG twenty four. Um, no, but the last president's trophy to win the cup was in thirteen. Yeah, the so Hawks, pl- right? so please remain hot. Don't, but don't get too don't, hot. Don't, but, don't get too hot. <laughs> but it it comes down to every year there is an upset in the first round of the playoffs. And yeah. when I say an upset, yeah. it's not the. Three, four. It's no, like Florida beating Boston. Two yeah. yeah. Columbus like, beating uh, Tampa. Tampa. Yeah. I mean, that happens. You can go all the way back to even when there was no salary cap. Mm. San Jose knocking out Detroit. Like that's it's just the way hey, that man, the first round they, of the playoffs. Who go. did the key? Who did the Canes beat to win the Stanley Cup in two thousand six? The Edmonton Oilers, an eight seed. Yeah. So it happens, man. Yeah. These are things that happen in the NHL. All right, dude. You got to get out of here before your street level parking goes. Oh, uh, yeah. And depending on where you parked in downtown Raleigh, they'll get you.